Hello, fellow investors. Welcome to Ritter on Real Estate, where we teach you how to passively invest like a pro. Today, my guest is Lauren Cohen. She's the founder of eCouncil Global, and Lauren is a serial entrepreneur. She's an international lawyer, realtor, and foreign investor expert. She's originally from Toronto and now lives in South Florida. Lauren is also a best-selling author and sought-after speaker, and she launched her podcast, Investing Across Borders, in late 2020. Lauren and her turnkey team believe in overcoming obstacles and navigating global expansion for business owners and real estate investors, while providing access to unique passive income solutions. Lauren's overriding goal is to help her clients navigate the path to invest, live, work, and play across borders. Lauren's superpower rests in paving a path to immigration visas through real estate investments. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Kent. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah, so your your topic is very interesting. Not something we've really talked about on the show, and, and something that I, I admittedly am not an expert in by any means. So I'm excited to chat with you and understand a little bit about what it takes to invest across borders, or maybe even have investors invest with you across borders, and vice versa. And so, really excited to dig in. But before we do, why don't you give the audience a, a little bit of a background and tell us about who you are? So I'm originally from Toronto a little bit north of you, probably a little bit east, right? Yeah. And, um, and I moved here. I've been in Florida for 20 years. And um, I have been a lawyer for longer than that. And I'm a lawyer both in Canada and the US. I'm also a realtor. And I have been working with investors from literally all over the world for at least a couple of decades, helping mm-hmm. them pave their path to immigrate through real estate and business investment and invest across borders and not only in real estate, but also in other businesses. But real estate is always the number one investment path because everybody wants a piece of real estate and rightfully so. And even when the market goes down, we know it's gonna come back up. And um, certainly through COVID, there's been some interesting changes, but the market here is super hot. So Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing this for a long time and my role is to kind of be the concierge, the one-stop shop, the quarterback, the handholder for all of what a person is doing in their investment uh, portfolio, in their investing career, creating strategies to help them access passive investment, let's say, or access passive streams of income as a realtor. Mm -hmm. And I love, love, love what I do because it really gives me a chance to impact people on multiple levels. Yeah, that's cool. I can definitely tell you're passionate about it. So that's awesome. I can feel it coming through. So how did you get, it's, it's kind of a niche space you're in. I mean, what, what drew your interest to this particular topic and kind of how'd you get started? So I've been a lawyer for a long time and I worked in house in a corporate setting for many years and um, I had some career challenges because I have my law license from Canada and Florida has an issue with that. And so I found another Avenue and then, Um, my then husband was actually deported on the way back from our honeymoon. So I was not in immigration at the time. It was 2000, beginning of like January, 2000 or February, 2007. And I was not in immigration at the time, but, um, it actually was this, the, the straw that caused me to go into immigration. (laughs) I had some interest in it. And then he was deported. He, it was a whole long story, but needless to say, he's, we're not married. That's not the only reason, believe me. But anyway, um, it was a very interesting experience, very, very harrowing at the time, of course. And I had been writing business plans for several years. So I, being an immigrant myself, I kind of just put all these pieces together and started being a business expert for other immigration lawyers in the business immigration space. And then because I got my real estate license and I grew up with real estate and I've always been interested in real estate investing and have done some myself, of course, I kind of just put the pieces together and created this signature program called How to Immigrate Through Real Estate. And I help people invest from every country into the US and into Canada and create strategies and structures around those investments so that they don't get caught, you know, with the tax bill or a legal bill or all these other bills that they don't need to deal with when they're trying to make money from real estate investing. 
Yeah, very interesting. So your your then husband gets deported, and that kind of kicks off this this passion for immigration. I, I can imagine that was uh, was quite the experience. So luckily, oh, yes. you had yes, the toolkit yes, yes. to to deal with it, and you developed a business out of it. That that's, that's amazing. Right. And that's why my book and my my nonprofit are both called Finding Your Silver Lining. The book is Finding Your Silver Lining in the business immigration process, and the nonprofit is Finding Your Silver Lining because there's always a silver lining through mm-hmm. the clouds of everything. And you just have to find it. Absolutely. That very cool. Very cool. So, um, so you mentioned the, the topic of like immigration through investment and what, it, what does that mean? So lots of people want to find uh, ways to immigrate mainly inbound to the U S but also, mm-hmm. uh, ex, you know, outside of the U S but let's talk about inbound to the U S because all, sure. most of your, listeners are in the US and so they have projects and they might be able to um, have people not passively in order to get a visa, you need to be actively involved in running a business. So it's kind of turning a passive real estate investment into an active business, which is kind of where I come in. That's my power is figuring out how to develop that strategy. And when they're running an active business involved in multiple doors and, you know, actually managing it as a business and Mm -hmm. renting properties and holding properties and selling properties and, you know, maybe Airbnb and other kinds of avenues, commercial properties, apartment buildings. Sure. Um, So in in those ways, there are paths to immigration visas through real estate investing. And that's become my signature program because everybody's like, what? Like I just got off the phone with a woman in Mexico and she said, well, I was reading that there's no such thing. You can't get a visa through immigration. I'm sorry, through real estate. Mm-hmm. Well, you can, but you can't do it if you buy a single family home or you buy a couple of you know doors and just unfortunately passively invest. You have to mm-hmm. be running it as a business. And that's the, the, the key differentiator. Gotcha. So, so is that the crux of it? It sounds like it, 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 Real estate, maybe it sounds like is is one of the most common ways people do this, but the idea is you have to be running a business in the U.S. And if you're doing that, then you can you can apply for immigration or, or you can um, get, get to the next step. Uh, yes, it's a little more complicated than that. And real sure. estate is only one of many avenues. Like people buy franchises, they set up restaurants, mm-hmm. they set up tire stores, they you know, develop businesses, they set up divisions of their foreign businesses. So there's all kinds of avenues. Sure. But for a lot of people that love real estate investing, there right. is also a path to immigration. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm doing a mini course called 10 Steps to Immigrate Through Real Estate. Eight of those 10 steps are applicable whether you're immigrating or not, because you still need to set up your structure, you still need the cross-border tax guidance, you need the asset protection guidance, you need mm-hmm. all of these critical elements to make sure that your structure is sound and that it's going to hold water in your home country as well as in the U.S. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so in in my my day to day, what what we're doing is we are, um, you know, we're we're buying large apartment buildings and we're syndicating mm-hmm. them and we're bringing we're bringing in uh, limited partners uh, for the equity on those deals. So, is this um, is that a situation where? where these things connect and we could, we could bring in investors uh, internationally, or, or is that a situation where that that's too passive for, so for you something can bring like in this? investors? Certainly, but it won't be a path to immigration because it is mm-hmm. passive. If they were involved as the manager of the apartment building and they were the general partner and actively mm-hmm. involved in running the business and had a 50% interest, which is a requirement as well, Okay. Then, then yes, it could be a path to immigration, but that doesn't mean that foreign investors are not a great potential uh, J- JV and and uh, other type of partner for you in the passive investment world, because lots of foreign investors don't have any interest in immigrating, but still need to or want to invest in U.S. real estate. Sure. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. And is there what is what is the process if you are so if you're trying to attract um, international investors, I mean, I mean, whether it's whether it's you know passively or, or for a more active thing, I mean, what are the, I guess, what's different if you're trying to to attract someone internationally versus someone that, that's in your own country? Hmm. Very different because you're so when you're 
attracting or speaking to investors in foreign countries and Canada is included in this because even though it's so close, people don't realize how very different Canadians are in their way of thinking and their way of investing and their way of making decisions, hmm. slow, more conservative, you know, it's just a very, it's a different mentality and having sure. being sure. a dual citizen and coming from Canada, I can tell you that it is very different. Canadians mm -hmm. are different. They call me the Canadian whisperer. But other countries are even more different. And what that means is you have to speak a different language to them. Mm -hmm. So you can't go to a Japanese investor and talk to them the same way as you could somebody in Wisconsin. Okay. Sure. And if you do, that Japanese investor is going to look at you like you have, you know, horns or something, right? Yeah. Because they're yeah. like, what are you talking about? So you like subject to, okay. Subject two is a common way to invest here in the U.S. In other countries, other than Canada, which has it in some places, most most places don't even know what that is, have never heard of it. They're like, you can assume a mortgage without having to qualify for it, basically assume it, not, if, not really. You can take over that mortgage and you don't have to qualify. And how does that work? And what are you talking about? Which mm -hmm. is going to be a big area going mm -hmm. forward once forbearance ends, right? After COVID. Mm, so, sure. so it's just about knowing who you're talking to as a multifamily apartment building developer or investor, you're mm -hmm. going to talk to them differently because what you want to do is find a way to appeal to them. That's going to get them maybe to that path to immigration as well. So it's not mm -hmm. only like, Oh, Joe, we want you to invest. Here's the, here's the opportunity. Here's the ROI. But also the other ROI for you is you may be able to qualify for an immigration visa. Yeah. So let's see how that discussion goes. Gotcha. And are you, I don't know if we, it's, I'm sure it's an extremely complicated process, but can you give us kind of a, a high level understanding of, you know, what is it, what does it take to um, kind of to, to, to hit those marks to be able to, to qualify in that way. So if I'm talking to an investor in the example you just gave, what would I be telling them would, would need to happen to be able to qualify from that, that immigration standpoint? So do you want the smart ass answer or the other answer? Let's start with smart ass and then, and then maybe Come we'll back it up. <laughs> Come to you. All right. Perfect. The smart ass answer is I have a solution. <laughs> Talk to Lauren. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and actually, it's not even only the smart ass answer. It's also the smart test answer, because the sure. truth is, you don't even if I arm you with which I will with some basic information. Yeah, it's kind of like I'm doing a course next next week, as I mentioned, right. and the course is going to make you armed and dangerous. But it's yep. like anything in law. You can you can give yeah. you some tools and some information. But at the end of the day, we you need to bring in the experts. Right. which is going to be one of my tips I share with you later. But right. the reality is that it's kind of like you have to look at the opportunity. You need to invest in at least five or more doors actively running it as a business. My general guideline is between 150 to 200,000 out of pocket investing in property of about 750 to a million. And these are my numbers. These are not government numbers. This is my take on it. And by the way, sure. I'm not giving legal advice, just saying, yeah. but I have to say that in every interview. <laughs> yeah, but, <everyone>. um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it, and then it's taking that and seeing how that fits into your structure of your business. So for some, I might say, and this might work for some of your investors, they want to invest passively, but maybe they want to buy a property management company and run that as their business as their path to immigration, mm -hmm. or maybe something another complementary business like electrical contracting or you know, the, the home stereo yeah. systems or whatever. So yep. it's all about creating a strategy that works for that perspective in immigrant and investor and figuring out how to make that a win-win for your gotcha. investors. Gotcha. No, I appreciate that. I understand. Yeah. It's obviously a very complex topic, but at least, uh, like you said, a, a little bit, a little bit more education and, and just enough maybe to be a little dangerous. So that's very helpful. So uh, what are other things that we need to be considering? I, I, you mentioned taxes, you mentioned asset protection. I mean, what are some of the other things that, that we need to be considering whether, um, you know, and probably from the perspective of if we're courting international investors, I mean, what are some of the things that, that change or that we need to be aware of? Well, the biggest thing every single time will be taxes because mm -hmm. you have, is, is there a tax treaty with that person's home country? Um, how does that tax treaty look? Did they have proper tax guidance? Because the last thing you want to happen, and this happens way too often across the Canadian US border is, you know, American company goes and sells Canadian people, Canadians, 
um, their package. Lots of companies do this, small, medium, large. Here's our package. Here's how you invest. Turnkey investing. Let's do it. Yep. Then the client, the, the, the person that you attract, the investor, does what you say. And this is kind of like I'm saying to you, don't do this. Yeah. Does what you say. Does it the way that the Americans do it. Goes back to Canada and has a huge tax bill because it didn't set up the right structure. Yeah. So you've got to set up that right structure that meets the Canadian requirements. And it's not one size fits all because you're going to have implications in your home country that you're not, that the American company doesn't really care about mm -hmm. because they only care about getting to giving you the structure that works here. But that's right. not the structure that works in India, that works in Israel, that works in South Africa, that works in Canada. Gotcha. So you've got legal, you've got tax, you've got crossing borders. Do you need a visa? You've got running a business. You've got taking income. All of these things are part and parcel of what goes mm -hmm. into your considerations. Yeah, so sounds like a very complex topic, and it, and it changes from country to country, right? Definitely. And so, is that is it is the advice then that if someone is from a foreign country um, and looking to invest in the U.S., I mean, do do they have to be getting specific counsel as well in their in their own country? Well, it, to understand it, it really the, the setup, because they if it most of the time we in the U.S. have cross border tax advisors that specialize in certain countries. Canada is easy. Okay. okay. Britain is easy. Mexico is easy. Israel is easy. Some of the smaller countries might not be as easy. Okay. okay? But you, so we just need to find some expert that is able to guide the client on that. Is there that tax treaty? How does that impact you? What's the best structure? How will that, like an LLC is treated differently in Canada than here. An LLC is treated differently in England than in Canada than here. How does mm -hmm. that look? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. No, that makes a lot of sense. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, I, I think we all know there, there's an interest in, in U.S. real estate, right, from, from foreign yeah. investors. Um, immigrate, be, being able to immigrate is obviously sounds like a big one. What are some of the other things that your, your clients tell you about uh, why they're seeking investments in the U.S.? because they have heavy, heavily regulated real estate industries in their home countries, because the U.S. real estate industry does have so much opportunity, so many locations, so many options. Um, there's so many, there's a lot of ways to earn money. There's many streams of income. There's many paths to real estate investing, passive, mm -hmm. active. Mm -hmm. um, you can usually follow everything virtually if you're investing at passively. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, a, a lot of ways and benefits to investing in the U S market. Gotcha. And as folks are seeking to invest in the U S is there, um, I mean, there, there's, it sounds like there's a lot to consider uh, things to set up, but, but just even getting your, your money into the country to make that investment, that's I mean, that, that's a pretty big hurdle, right? It is a big hurdle. Yes, absolutely. Because you have that, you have money laundering issues and, um, you know, all kinds of things related to how did they, how did, how are they allowed to export their, their money from their home country? There's export mm -hmm. considerations, there's currency, um, um, conversion considerations, all kinds of different things. Absolutely. Gotcha. Yes. So sounds, yeah, very complex. I think we, we got to go back to your answer of, uh, you know, talk to Lauren <laughs> if, if, we, if we need some help in this space. If you have international investors that are interested, there's a lot of, a lot of boxes that need to be checked. It sounds like yeah, and a lot of different sure. facets. And, and you're, that's what you said. You're serving as kind of that concierge to help mm -hmm. them across all those different areas. Right. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's awesome. Sounds like an amazing service. Thank you. So, um, well, yeah, as, uh, as we wind down the show, there's, there's one thing that I like to get into an area called keys to success. And I'd love to get your answers to, to some of these questions. Mm -hmm. First off is if you only had one question, what is the one question that, that every investor should, should be asking their attorney? Have you ever worked with a real estate investor from wherever before? X country. Gotcha. Yeah. It sounds like the, the specificity around the country is extremely important. Yes. Very good. What are you most proud of in your career? The ability to pivot. And um, there's been a lot of pivoting through COVID, through being a mm -hmm. single mom, mm -hmm. through not being able to 
find my full potential as a lawyer in my traditional legal career, um, creating strong relationships through it all that have allowed me to pivot and be successful. That's awesome. That is definitely an, an amazing skill. What's a book that everyone should be reading? There's so many books that I love, but one of the books that I highly recommend is The E-Myth, if you haven't read it, by my friend, my Herber. It's and fantastic. And every other book, there's The E-Myth for Real Estate Investors. Read that yeah. too. There's The E-Myth Revisited. Read the whole series. He's, he's <laughs> amazing. He's like yeah. the original six of the real estate investment. I'm sorry, of the entrepreneurial book world. Yeah, I, I've read the the E Myth for Entrepreneurs, and it's uh, yep. it's an amazing book. Very well. And lastly, what is your number one key to success? Stay in your lane. Don't you tell try us a little to do more? everything. Okay. You are if you are going to be successful in your business, it's going to be because you focus on what you do best, which is running your business, investing in real estate, whatever the business is. Mm-hmm. Don't try to do it all because you'll fail, and um, it's better to bring in specialists and experts in their fields because they're doing what they're doing for a reason. Don't try to be a lawyer if you're not. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't try to be a tax accountant. Okay. (laughs) So that's a really good one. Awesome. Well, very good. Lauren, thank you so much for, for coming on today. If folks want to get in touch with you and want to learn more, how can they reach out? Well, actually, I have a brand new website that's just launching. It's uh, all my podcasts, which my podcast is called Investing Across Borders. So you can subscribe mm-hmm. to that on Apple or Google or whatever. But my, my brand new website is laurenesq.com, which is where my podcasts are featured, L-A-U-R-E-N-E-S-Q.com. And you can find me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, um, pretty much everywhere. I'm, I'm very much in the throes of social media. And um, you can reach me directly by calling 866-724-0085, 866-724-0085. If you email me, I'll give you my personal email since it matches laurenesq.com. It's laurenesq at gmail.com. And if you email me and ask me for a copy of my Real Estate Across Borders ebook and tell me that you found me on this lovely show, I will be happy to share that ebook and a coupon code with you. It's a $47 value and I'm happy to share that with you. Fantastic. Thank you for giving that gift to our listeners. And we'll make sure that all of that is uh, linked down in the show notes so that folks can access all that and get a hold of you. But a lot of good ways to, to get a hold of you, a lot of good content that you're putting out. So once again, thank you so much, Lauren, really fascinating conversation today. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'll share that with you also. Have a good one. Take care, Ken.